Hey there viewers and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. We've got a 2007 Chrysler Pacifica here with a P0406 EGR circuit voltage high. So one of my subscribers, Wyatt One Able, uh, he's got his own little uh, YouTube channel going on with uh, various videos on that. Has recently had this problem on his own Chrysler product. Uh, different engine, different car, same valve type uh, and same system type. And uh, uh, it's pretty cool. I think he's, uh, you know, uh, doing really good and uh, is trying to renew his interest in automotive um, repair. And he mentioned, you know, many mentions that he watches, you know, a lot of uh, YouTubers uh, doing auto stuff and, you know, particularly Scanner Danner and he's, you know, reading his book and you know, trying to get kind of up to date from, uh, you know, from the 70s and 80s, I guess, you know, back when he was a mechanic. So I just kind of wanted to do this uh, video uh, to show the steps that I would approach uh, or that I would use uh, to solve uh, this code on a Chrysler product uh, which is super common and just to be right up front with it it's 99.8 percent usually the valve anyways but it's always good to you know go through and test because it's that 0.2 percent that'll mop the floor with you. So my first step in this process was uh, about like anybody's would be scan tool retrieve the code and then just went on a test drive uh, looked at three PIDs, uh, EGR, um, position sensor, EGR actual and desired uh, command. And driving down the road with these Chryslers, it's, it, or mostly anything with this style EGR valve, this linear EGR valve, uh, you know, it's duty cycle controlled valves. Uh, you go down the road, it was commanded at, you know, a certain percentage, but the actual value was just flying all over the place. And then the uh, EGR position sensor circuit was going anywhere from like, you know, a half a volt up to five volts. And that's when it sets a code. Once it gets outside of its range, which I think on these is like 4.8 volts, uh, when it stays above that for a given amount of seconds, you get your light on and here you go. Uh, so that's a helpful piece of information. And that's why I told why also is instead of looking at flow charts and everything, look at the code setting criteria. What does it take to generate this code? And in this case, it takes a given amount of time, a certain time basis, and I don't remember what it is, one or two seconds of the EGR position sensor circuit being above a certain voltage. So uh, being it's a code, you know, a high code, it's a, essentially like having an open circuit. It's like if you take and unplug this EGR valve, you know, the voltage goes high. And essentially that's what the EGR valve is seeing. It's seeing the position sensor kind of stops working, voltage goes high. Uh, so I'll, I gotta try to kind of think how I approach these because we do so many of these stinking things that, um, I probably skip steps. Uh, so uh, on his channel, what he did is um, he got a wiring diagram. I just got a connector printout here so we could uh, all share this. So I'll show you guys what the uh, connector pinout is uh, right there. So pretty pretty straightforward. EGR position signal, five volt supply and sensor ground. So that's your typical three wire sensor. Uh, there's an empty hole, chassis ground, and then your EGR control. Uh, so being that we show a chassis ground, EGR control, we automatically know it's a power side switched you know pulse width modulated EGR valve because it has a constant ground so the only other way it could turn on is with a power uh, so you know why it goes through and he uh, shows how to test each one of those circuits in his video checking it for five volts checking for sensor ground checking for chassis ground I don't remember if he checked for control I don't believe so but I know it has control because I can well I don't want to say I know that at this point, I can assume that. Uh, and this is where I may have to, you know, think of something different here. I use a scan tool. Um, and my scan tool has bi-directional control. So I can command my EGR valve on and we can look at the EGR position signal and see what it's actually doing. And I'll show you guys how I do that or uh, what I find typically is at fault with these valves. I get my scan tool turned on here and I'll, I'll show you that little process. All right, so we're gonna go to, we're gonna just use some bi-directional controls here on the Altel. Uh, on the EGR valve itself, what I, what I usually go ahead and do is, uh, first of all, we'll look at uh, quick and dirty circuit test. Uh, we're just gonna go right in here to some live data. I'm gonna pull up the EGR position. I guess I'll just run you down the uh, whole little spiel of what I would do. 
the plane it should be an EGR PID here. I was just looking at it not too long ago. These data lists are long on these Chryslers. Where are you, little fella? EGR duty cycle. We don't want that. We want EGR position. EGR sensed volts. So we'll bring that up. It is at 3.8 whatever. So that is the EGR position sensor feedback. Theoretically, if we unplug it, it should go to 5 volts. Or close to it. 4.95. Oh, it's not going to because I got my meter plugged in. The impedance of my meter is holding it back. There we go. 5.0000004 oh, volts. Um, put my meter back in. And our meter will agree, so we're at 4.956. Of course, this should agree. 4.96. So it rounds up. Close enough. So that, that's a good uh, test that lets us know that our signal return wire is likely good. We can also grab the scope. On the rope and if we touch our back probe there it should go to zero volts I believe I hook the ground and that goes to zero volts with our test light hooked to it and then back to five with our test light unhooked so that's a quick circuit integrity check and of course uh, we can also go through uh, we can hook our test light to power we can check both grounds uh, I guess I guess we can just do that real quick just for the sake of sharing Of course, we have a connector pin out so we can see uh, Who's Sam and who's Henry here? Uh, so sensor ground should be this one up here That's our equipment So we got a good ground there, uh, you know our lights lit up anyways And then number four is also chassis ground So we got two grounds, so that's good And then very quickly we can check our 5 volt signal, which is our top middle pin, so pin number 2. We'll just front probe it lightly. We can see on our, can you guys see that there? So we're at 5 volts right there. So you can see how very quickly you can do a couple of very quick circuit checks. You know, looking at data on your scan tool plus using your regular multimeter. And you can use just your multimeter too, but it's nice to see what the computer is seeing. Uh, so we're going to probe back into our position sensor, so pin 1, we're going to just back probe into that. And then I'm going to plug the sensor in. Now in this case it is nice to have a graphing multimeter because uh, it's easier to see these glitches. Uh, so right now it's holding pretty steady. I got it on a 5 second time basis, we're at 3.88 volts. And I don't know, let me, uh, let me get you guys set up here. So right now the EGR valve is not even being commanded on and usually what happens is that position sensor fails so you can just lightly tap on it and the scales will go kind of crazy. Not too bad right there, it just went to you know 3.91. So not too bad right there. Uh, what we will do, or what it is my habit to do, is we'll pop back out of here. We'll go into active test and most bi-directional scan tools are going to have this option. EGR valve duty cycle will open it up, let's you know, just say 30%. So now it's open. Let me, uh, oh shoot, I didn't pause that. Let me, let me close that again. I'll get you guys zoomed in on that so you can see. So here our EGR valve is closed. We're going to open it to 30%. Now this should be a pretty crisp opening um, where the further open the EGR valve is in this case, the lower the voltage goes, uh, all the way down to, I would assume, a half a volt. Uh, so we're going to open it 32%. So you see how we're getting all the, all the hash uh, right there in our waveform as that tries to open the valve. And if we just lightly tap on that tube, we'll tap on the EGR valve itself, you can see how the position sensor goes kind of crazy. And that's super common. You can imagine if we had the engine running, what this does. You get the engine running, I mean, currently right now the engine would stall, but prior to that, I mean, this thing is just all over the place. Uh, so we can open it even further. We've got a 64% duty cycle. And you can see when it changes states, 
you know, that position sensor gets all kind of crazy. And you can see, yeah, I mean, this is not unnormal. Just barely. I'm just tapping the EGR tube too. So this is a long ways from the, well, I don't say it's a long ways from the EGR valve, but EGR valve's down here. I'm just tapping up here by the manifold. Well, that's the manifold. This is the pipe to the EGR valve. You know, just lightly tapping it and you can see the discrepancies. So there's a good chance that when you're driving with manifold vacuum, EGR back pressure, engine vibrations, road vibrations, you can imagine how, how, how bad that is. Um, can you see it with a regular multimeter? I imagine. So there's our regular digital multimeter. And you most certainly can. Uh, you can even set it up, you can even set your min-max values on there if you just wanted to catch it. You know, if you had a bi-directional scan tool and a multimeter, you certainly could do this. Certainly use your data here. Uh, the data on the scan tool actually concurs with this. Uh, these are usually very, very straightforward. Um, he did make a mention though, uh, if you don't have a bi-directional scan tool, if you don't have a bi-directional scan tool or any way to you know, modulate a signal to the EGR valve to open it in a pos uh, specific position, uh, the only two positions you can do to test it as far as, you know, the hammer test, to the best of my knowledge, are closed in the, you know, key on engine off, closed position, you know, bang it. And, I mean, we just seen right there, the thing was stuck. It actually was broke right there. I don't know if you guys seen it, but it was actually at five volts. And then I just tapped it and it went back to 3.8. Hopefully you saw that. I, I don't know, I guess we can probably try to duplicate it again. Let's see. There's down to 1.22. It's bouncing over. It's being silly. We'll shut it off. That's at 3.98 volts. Um, I'll make it so you can see it. So just a second ago, it was at 4.9, I think it was. So it was our, that was our code setting criteria. EGR valves off. Voltage is high. You know, we tapped it and it went. that we'll try it again we'll try some different see right there we just hit our code setting criteria so right now I've got the EGR valve almost fully open but we can see our voltages are going all over the place kind of get this back on a, on a graph here I could change our scale to a 5 volt scale, but we'll back that back out. Alright, well, I went back to the 3.98 at that time. I'll look back to the footage, but I believe it is at 4. Point whatever. I lost my train of thought. What were we talking about, Hannah? I don't know. You don't even know. You didn't even listen to it. Oh yes, uh, doing this without a scan tool. Uh, so I think you can check it in the fully closed position or 100% duty cycle fully open. You can jumper the EGR control. You can jumper that to power and open the valve all the way manually using the battery. Uh, we can demonstrate that. In my experience though, when the valve is commanded fully open and you tap on it, you probably won't experience this problem because you're applying such a such a force, um, and you're also you have the valve in a position where it's not normally in. Uh, so maybe the good part. I think the position sensor, you know, being a variable potentiometer, wears out in a given spot. You know, it's going to wear out in a spot where it runs all the time, which is in that 40 to 60 percent duty cycle range. So we'll back probe the control side. I believe it's that way or there. We don't want to get this wrong. Let's go back, probe the control side. We shut the key off, man. Uh, then we can take a standard jump wire. Be 
because our test light wouldn't carry enough current to turn this on. Uh, I'm sorry, turn the key on. Here. We have My bad. Uh, our test light will not carry enough current to activate this EGR valve, I do not believe. Tesla, we should be able to reach down here and this would fully open EGR valve. So it's at 0.34 volts. But tapping on it does nothing. Uh, it does open EGR valve all the way. I can show you that. I mean, we can, uh, we can see that easily. So that's our closed voltage. Yeah, I see 4.3 volts. So that's a little high right now. So if we tap this, it should go down. See? So. Kind of proof in the pudding right here. I mean, uh, so I'll open the EGR valve all the way. I've got power at the tip of my test light. We're back probed in. EGR valve is fully open, 0.34 volts. Tapping does nothing. We'll let it go back closed, and there she is. There, lady, is your problem. You guys seen it, the four point whatever volts it was just at. One whack and she goes back to normal. So there you go. PO406 Chrysler EGR valve diagnostics. Uh, you can really, yeah, I mean, we can beat this thing right to death, uh, but I wanted to try to approach it in a very simple method or as simple as I could think of. Sometimes it's really hard for us to get out of the habits of what, how we normally do it. Um, a lot of these you can make the call right from the seat just using the using a scan tool, unplug it, you know, you know, quick circuit integrities, plug it in, you know, five minutes later, you're done. Uh, but, you know, you guys can see regular, regular voltmeter, graphing voltmeters are pretty great. Um, but regular voltmeter, you can figure this out. And, uh, you know, bi-directional scan tools are getting cheaper and cheaper by the day. And uh, if you plan on working on cars, uh, especially 96 and newer, I'd recommend you get one. Um, if you're doing anything like this, a lot of this stuff is getting harder and harder to do without it. And uh, I guess just on a side note, as I've made this suggestion before, you know, people look at the price of the Altel or the Altel, the Maxisys Mini, or you know, any Snap-on tools, anything like that. A uh, couple things: you're buying a new one, going on it with a couple of buddies, uh, split the cost, share the tool. Or what I always find is Craigslist. Man, you can pick up some fantastic tools on Craigslist. I've been on there numerous times and you'll find you know uh, you know really nice snap-on scan tools for like a grand I'm talking you know seven eight thousand dollar tools guy bought it never used it it's three four years out of date big deal if you can pick that thing up for like 800 bucks send it in get it you know up to date I mean that you got some powerful equipment there so something to consider anyhow we're not gonna ramble any further and it's rolling her eyes at me we're gonna keep on trucking. Hope you guys like this video. Uh, of course, I probably missed some stuff, so make sure you uh, put that in the comments of other various tests that we could do. But uh, I'm gonna get a valve, we're gonna put it on here. And then I'll flip the camera right back on and show you the same little hammer test, proof of concept. Only take a minute. Okay, we got our new valve installed. We got to use our sweet new ratchet, which made this job fantastic. Shimon, there we go. We're going to go back to our EGR valve duty cycle. Uh, we should see much smoother transitions uh, from high to low. Uh, so the off voltage is 3.96. Shouldn't very much when we whack on it. 3.96. You zoom in there so you guys can see what's going on. You kind of got an idea of what we're going to do. Uh, so we're going to open her at a 32% duty cycle. Nice crisp line, 2.5 volts. Nice and steady. Uh, let's open her up a little more. Let's see here. Uh, so you can see it, re it releases the EGR valve and then it um, opens it further. You'll see, how, so I'll, I'll back it off. Right now we're gonna go up in increments. So you can see the step there. We're gonna go up another increment. Step there another increment. 
So you can see each time we open the valve further, it, uh, you know, when it changes the duty cycle, it does momentarily uh, release it. Uh, let's see, can you guys see? Okay. Uh, so at any, at any rate, we'll go, uh, so where are we at here? We're at 48% duty cycle. Rock solid. And we can see going, you know, at different rates, we can see just that really smooth, crisp transition of the EGR valve. None of that hatchy business, baby. So we're over here in the dissection table. The top part of the EGR valve is the position sensor. And from what I've found in the past, usually there's a fair amount of exhaust gas that leaks up past the pinnel onto the sensor and gets her full of the black goo. And that's what ruins it. I assume, I don't know, I'm not a, I'm not a EGR valve expert. I'm not an expert in anything really. They say jack of all trades, master of none. You know what they say, Hannah? Yeah? Okay, time for the reveal. That's my drum roll. Didn't really sound that good. Ooh. So we'll take that off. And of course, so this is our position sensor here. So that's it. As the EGR valve is in its full up position, fully closed <laughs> this is fully out and as EGR valve comes up that's why our voltage uh, reduces so you guys can see how that works and it is of course I'll use my dirty finger to show you how dirty it is so you can see the black soot on it I can only imagine that it you know gets up inside here of course let's take it to a stage two strip down call it we should be able to pull this little centerpiece out I'm thinking and have a look at the actual potentiometer. Maybe. Somebody put it together, we should be able to take it apart, right? Come on, little fella. What do they use? High frequency welders, I think. So now they bond this stuff. May need to get destructive. But I'd like to see the little brushes and veins. The brushes and stuff. Oh my gosh, I should have safety glasses on. Folks, I'm a liar. The uh, contacts in this one are still in good shape and still have a little smudge of grease on them. We probably could have tested this sensor independently of EGR valve. Yes, so there was no wicking. There was no wicking action of the black smudgy stuff going up inside uh, as I anticipated. So, there goes that theory. Uh, it's kind of funny, I have taken these apart in the past, so, uh, particularly on GMs, I almost think I have a video on it, in which case we have not even displayed yet, so there's some insider info where an EGR valve, it doesn't mop the floor with me, but it gets me kind of frustrated. Someday that'll be out, it's one I did way back this winter, but, so there's our contact surfaces, they look pretty good. And they still got their paste on them. So it could have been a problem with the coils and its inability to hold the EGR in a certain position or a problem with that sensor that was not visible to our naked eye. We will never know because I destroyed it without further scientific 
what do they say, quantitative proof? Quantitative proof, I don't know. Some high tech big word. Anyhow, we're not one with big words on our channel. So Google Plus, Facebook, all that, you know what to do, subscribe to our channel if you like our videos. And remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.